Hi, my name is Dawn, and today we're going to talk through the timeline and how to schedule your meetings. Now, one of the first things that I always do when I'm planning for a first Lego League season is I actually start with the end in mind. So the very first thing I do is get the date for the competition and look at that because I like to plan backwards from the competition forward to the FLL challenge. That way, if I plan from the backwards, I can have a finished date for the robot, for research, for missions, and for core values. I like to have all of those things done at least two weeks before the actual competition, which gives us extra time to practice because teams that don't go into um, competition having practiced anything, it usually shows. They are far more competent, they are far more comfortable if they've had time to practice. And I'm talking practicing things from mock judging to doing their research presentations over and over and over again to doing timed runs. I'm just gonna, as an aside, timed runs are really, really important so that you understand and the kids understand which mission they're doing next, what order they have to put their things in the robot. Um, so when we plan backwards from the competition forward, it allows us to have those time instead of getting caught up at the end. So the first thing I would say is plan from the competition forward to challenge. One of the other reasons that I do that is I like to have a parent or community meeting about a week before the competition. And that's so that the kids can practice their research projects. They can do a timed run. They can talk through their core values in front of an audience. If the very first time that kids are going to present these things be in front of judges, it's very, very stressful for them. So if we can have them do that before parents or community members, that really helps them. One of the other benefits of having a parent's community meeting is that the parents then can see what the kids have been doing all of this time. And that really helps them as well during, um, during competition. So plan backwards. The other thing, when we are planning backwards, I like to write down all of the dates of our competitions. I actually have them on my papers here for this season. So I worked backwards, found the date of when our competition was, wrote down all of the dates, and then I start writing goals. So each week has a goal generally for robots. It has a goal for research and it has a goal for core values. That way we know what we're going to do, we're moving forward, and on the off chance that I'm not there, somebody else can step in and they know what we're going to do. So when I plan, this is what it looks like, and I have pages of those plans. So a couple of the other things that I wanted to note is that when you're planning and structuring a timeline and meeting, you should have a set structure for your meeting itself. So I'm going to flip this board. So this is my board setup for every meeting. So the same structure for each meeting is basically the same. I always have what week it is. By about week eight or nine, I like to not, I like to start giving them a timeline, a deadline of how many meetings they have left. That just gives them a little extra, oh my goodness, it's time to actually pay attention. Uh, so I have a countdown that always is up there. Um, I put the goals up as well for each meeting. That way the kids know where we're going, uh, what we're doing, and what they need to focus on. So we generally start with core values. So twice a month, I usually plan on doing an actual core values challenge, an activity that um, one is fun, two really helps them practice some of those core value challenges that they have, and then it gives them time to review how they used core values, how they didn't, how they could do it better. But then the other twice a month, I really like defining and going over the core values and letting each of the kids tell me how they show that in their everyday life. Because we don't want core values to be just about FLL. 
we want core values to be able to go out and change our world and change these kids' lives. And so core values is something that we always put at the very beginning of our meetings. Generally then we usually go into research um, just because, let's be honest, it's sometimes not as exciting as the robot. So if we do that at the beginning of a meeting, generally then it gets done. So we want, we usually go into research for a certain amount of time and then I have what the goals are for our robot. So we have usually by, this is by week 10. So we, we're 10 weeks in, we probably have five more weeks, five or six more weeks before competition. And I like to have them have uh, so many missions completed. At the beginning of the season, we usually strategize for three to five missions um, to be completed by the end of the season. So here we're moving towards the end goal if they don't have those numbers, that's okay, but that gives them something to go for, something to work towards. The other thing I always do is have a 15 minute cleanup at the end. So I have chore cards. Um, we kind of make it a game. Usually our high school mentors have the chore cards. Uh, kid, the captains are able to pick which chore cards and then they do things like vacuuming, putting away all the Legos, putting away their robot. And when it's done, then they get a dum-dum. And uh, at our building, getting a dum-dum is a big deal. And it's only, you only get a dum-dum if you've cleaned something. So I like to have this structure uh, up all the time. And each week this changes. And again, this helps us stay on track and know where we're going. So before you start your season, I really think one really successful thing is to set a timeline and then set a structure for each of your meetings.